Uh, the NBA is more of a reality show. It'll be around two. They're not going anywhere, but it's as popular as the stars and celebrities in the reality show. It fluctuates. And the NBA is a soap opera. And it's a fun soap opera. And I, I like the way the NFL runs its business. They're not nearly as beholden to one or two players and stars that drive their business. But I also like the NBA for its soap opera qualities. I think the, the, the playoffs and the free agency is way better than the regular season. I really do. I don't even think it's close. I like the soap opera. So let's discuss the soap opera. There are eight free agents. I'm not going to count Anthony Davis because he's not a free agent. So there's eight free agents, you know, big name guys who are going to be available on the market. And I believe six of the eight are going nowhere. It's fun to speculate, but I think Kevin Durant stays. Kawhi Leonard leaning to staying in Toronto. I don't believe all the rumors. Kyrie stays in Boston. I think Clay Thompson stays. Jimmy Butler stays in Philadelphia. Chris Middleton stays in Milwaukee. I do think Boogie Cousins, sort of a consolation prize, ends up somewhere for about 10 million bucks. And I think Kemba Walker ends up with the Knicks. He's from New York. He played at UConn. That's who I think the Knicks get. And he'll be fun, uh, not transformative, but a good player. So I think six of the eight aren't going anywhere. And uh, the two guys that are leaving, Kemba Walker and Boogie Cousins, aren't changing anything other than their own zip codes. But let's talk about Kevin Durant. Because he's really the only guy in the market that changes everything. If he leaves Golden State, oh, it is not the same team. And if he goes to another place, he brings somebody with him, and they contend for a title. Just this weekend, he was hanging out. They caught on camera him talking to Kyrie Irving, and people freaked out and are now suggesting it's a done deal. Well, if I bump into my neighbor's wife at the grocery store, are we having an affair? It was an all-star game. They were both there. It was a hallway. They were walking in it. It means nothing. But it shows you the intrigue around Kevin Durant because he really is the only guy in the market, including Jimmy Butler and Clay Thompson and Kyrie Irving, and they're very good players. But I watched Kyrie Irving before LeBron arrived in Cleveland, and he didn't do squat. He's not going to do anything by himself. Durant's the story. And Kevin Durant, according to multiple sources, people I trust that cover the NBA, it matters to him to be viewed as an equal or better than LeBron. So if you start with that premise, which I believe to be true, and there's nothing wrong with that. Tom Brady wanted to be better than Montana. There is nothing wrong with that. That's what I like about Kevin Durant. He's competitive. He wants to be an all-timer. I want you to think about this. In three months, Kevin Durant's going to win his third straight title. In three months, Kevin Durant will be the finals MVP. Now let's take a step back and remember that he wants to be seen as superior to LeBron. The first title for Kevin Durant beating LeBron, um, about 10% of you were like, Durant's better. About 10, 15% of you. But you were very quickly washed away. That's silly. And then last year he won his second and was MVP over LeBron. About 25% of you, maybe 30, were like, Durant's better than LeBron. And that had a little more staying power, but a couple of weeks later it washed away. This year, when Kevin Durant wins a title and is MVP and LeBron either gets washed out early in the playoffs or doesn't make them, that number's going to rise to 50%. Half the people are going to say, come on, LeBron can't make the playoffs. And this guy just won his third straight championship? Finals MVP, and he will be third straight time. The number will rise to about half of you, and you will not go away. But that's not where the story ends. If Kevin Durant stays and wins a fourth straight title, and I believe the Warriors would, oh, then the number is no longer 10% or 25 or 50 the number leans toward Durant, and we have ourselves a second conversation beyond MJ and LeBron, and it becomes LeBron and Durant. And that argument will last forever, because as Chris Broussard said on our show recently, that would be territory not even MJ got to. Assuming they win the championship this year, I think he should stay for the fourth year. 
and see if they can win four straight. Because Magic, Michael, Bird, uh, Kareem, Duncan, Kobe, Shaq, nobody other than Bill Russell has won four straight championships. Why in the world would Kevin Durant, when he wins this year, when he's got the golden egg of affirmation within his sights, Steph, Clay, Kerr, Draymond, probably don't have Boogie, probably won't need it. LeBron struggling in Los Angeles, and he will be unless he gets AD and maybe struggling some, even if he does in his 17th year. You don't go away from that. And how do I know he wouldn't go away from that? Because Kevin Durant will have seen what happens to stars, i.e. LeBron, when you go to the big city and try to do it by yourself. The man he's chasing is doing that now, and it's not working. The soap opera of the NBA is a different strategy and business deal than the NFL. I like both. But let's be honest about the soap opera. There's one guy that matters, Kevin Durant. And he's not going anywhere. Let me shift to this. Charles Barkley took a shot at me. Well, not directly, but it was kind of a shot. He had two strong comments yesterday. I'm going to read both. The first one I totally agree with. He said this Antony Anthony Davis situation is a bad deal. Bad look for the league. Kid can't go out there, give it 100% because he's worried about getting hurt. The Pelicans aren't trying to win. And you see already he's had less than three points in the last few weeks. It's just ridiculous. On that opinion, Charles is right. This is bad for the league. This is not great. I mean, it was always destined to be a little ugly, but it's not good. And I totally agree with him. Let's go to Sir Charles' second comment. I hear all these clowns on TV saying it's great for players getting all this power. What in the world? That appears to be a shot at me. Anyway. Let me tell you, you guys, something. Workers are never going to have power over the ownership, ever. It might work for a couple of guys, but in the history of the world, workers don't overtake people who own a business. Charles is also right on that one. I defend players' mobility because I've been mobile, and I would be an utter hypocrite to come on the air and not defend players' mobility when all I've done is zigzag around the country for commerce. So I support players. But LeBron is a little like Steve Jobs. Remember Steve Jobs, the late Steve Jobs? He was handsome, dynamic, had a personality, witty, funny, kind of an artist. He made tech cool. Don't don't think he is what Silicon Valley is. Silicon Valley is mostly tech nerds, kids who grow up face buried in a screen, don't ask the pretty girl out, not cool or remotely hip. That's what Silicon Valley is, and now they're very rich. Steve Jobs was cool. Steve Jobs was good looking. Women love Steve Jobs. He was dashing and funny and artistic and creative and clever and everything Silicon Valley really truly isn't. Similarly with LeBron James, LeBron's created a mythology that the players bigger than the team and the coach and the league and the logo and it just not. Remember, LeBron James is political. Kawhi's not. Harden's not. Paul George is not. Westbrook is not. Carl Anthony Towns is not. Ben Simmons is not. LeBron is a TV mogul. Russell Westbrook hates the media. James Harden broke up with a Kardashian, didn't want to be part of the circus. LeBron has one-year deals. Most stars want security. LeBron gets coaches fired. Most players don't want anything, including stars, to do with that. Don't kid yourself on this. LeBron changes ratings. James Harden doesn't. Chris Paul doesn't. Blake Griffin didn't. Kemba Walker doesn't. Giannis doesn't. Much like Steve Jobs in Silicon Valley, don't confuse an outlier, a dashing creative figure for what Silicon Valley is. Charles Barkley's right here. Kevin Durant has said his quote, not mine. I just want to play basketball. Kawhi Leonard doesn't talk. Westbrook avoids the media. Paul George had a choice to be a star. And he chose Applebee's in Oklahoma City. Giannis loves Milwaukee and never wants to leave. Charles Barkley's right about this. Ownership, 
general managers, the logo, the commissioner, they run the league. But about every decade, we get a player, Michael Jordan comes to mind, who is so great and so gifted, he alters the power balance briefly. But if LeBron retired tomorrow, who would be the next LeBron? Not just physically, emotionally, politically, there is none. Most NBA stars are much closer to Kawhi Leonard and Kevin Durant. They want to hoop it, have fun with their friends, girlfriend, family, or wife. Rinse and repeat. Steve Jobs is an outlier. LeBron's an outlier. And Charles Barkley, even though he blasted me, is right. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.